this is, this is, this is. What's up, homie? What's up, man? How you been? Oh, I'm so good. Good, good, I took good. over. We're at a uh, family barbecue, so I took over some random room. Oh, so, <laughs> okay. I, so I look like I'm in a closet. <laughs> so you're telling me, yeah, yeah, we can do it on Monday, but you're like, totally, uh, we can do it. It's gonna be busy. All right, we'll make it's, we won't make this too too crazy. Then. No, it's, it's all good. I love this. Yeah, I love what you do, man. You got some good stuff always. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, dude, it's been a minute, Brody. Yeah, my friend. Yes. My my once Boise friend now Vegas. Yeah, yeah. The Boise times we had a lot more fun. I feel like Vegas times it's just like a blur. You know, it's a blur. <laughs> it was fun. I remember yeah, yeah, having yeah. fun. <laughs> it was yeah, a blur yeah. well, for, for you. Me, for me, yeah. It was a blur. Yeah. The uh, the Boise times we uh, I felt like it was more uh, goal oriented. Yeah. yeah. There was things to do. And right. We were busy, and that was that was that was nice. Absolutely. Structure. Vegas was goal oriented, just a different kind of goal. The goal totally. to party hard was our goal. Yeah, yeah. Good Vegas times. had some good stuff. Uh, the Vegas, whenever I think of you in Vegas, I think of the uh, July 18th show where you did um, Waste of Space. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you did the, the DVD and everything, and then we played uh, Craps, and then we went to, yeah. we went to the uh, EDR for like the employees. Do you remember that? Yes. Like, doubled into like the hallways and everybody was like, what the hell are all these dudes doing back here? And we just were eating uh, their food. Yeah. Just, <laughs> they were just like, what is happening? <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, when MXPX has played like um, Hard Rock, what's the, that's where we were. We were at the Hard Rock. Wasted Space was there. Yeah. But what the joint, is it called the joint, the big room? Yeah. The, well, it was, yeah. <clears throat> was. It's not there anymore. So back in the days when the joint existed, we would play, play there, and they would give you cards. You could go mm-hmm. in, you go into the room, and it's just a cafeteria. And it's yeah. like a buffet, yeah, yeah. but for employees. So it's like a, a right. casino buffet for employees. It was insane. We're just like, oh, and that's where we were, for people that don't know. Yeah. So. Uh, for the employees, it became like the... Like the you know like Starbucks the end of the day muffins and stuff mm-hmm. will all end up in the in EDR. So everybody loved the EDR at the end of the day. End of the day was like the money spot. You got all the good restaurants leftovers. Like it was great. I love that shit. <laughs> I love it. So for people that don't know, Brody Knight, you have a yes. band. It's called Sprockets. I do. And. Yes. Um, Back way back in the day, I produced. Was it your first album or your second album? It was the second, but we don't talk about the first one. So we don't talk about the. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Fight Club thing. It's a, yeah. It's <clears throat> only if you know, you know. But we don't. We don't bring it out. <laughs> Is the first album on streaming? It was until like two years ago, like, and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. All right, <laughs> I, can't, I, get you. I can't. It was. It kept on sneaking into my shuffle. And then I was upset. So I was like, hey, is this still on? And then, you know, I just had to pull it out. But it's great because now we're recycling some of those songs that we we just didn't know what we were doing. Like, you probably didn't know this when you, like, were, hey, come to Monkey Trench. But we were in a studio one time before, and it was like this producer was just like, let's just record as fast as you can. Let's do one takes. And so we didn't have, like... We didn't have a metronome, and we didn't have anything except for, like, just everyone playing at once. Yeah. And so, like, even when I wanted to do, like, two takes for the the vocals, there's one song on that album that actually did really well for us. But the second verse, I stopped singing because I was like, oh, I messed up. And we'll go back and like, get it. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> no, no, this is great. This is like a Coldplay thing. It's kind of like you don't know what you're doing. And they just let me. You don't me. know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I was. So we learned a lot from that moment in like a very negative way. But yeah. then when we went to you, like you probably didn't know that like, you were going to be. Like, it was like a mentorship. Hmm. Like that was a, one of those moments where like you were recording. I think uh, Tumble Down, mm-hmm. the uh, the second or the full. Was it the full album? The first. Album? Well, we have we have two two full albums. So we have an EP and then a. And then we did the, the two albums. So self-titled 
empty bottle. I don't know which one it was when I you think came it was, out. It was self-titled. Self-titled. Okay, the first one. Yeah, yeah. you're doing that, and uh, with "Son of a Gun" on it, mm. and so you would like you would record your parts. You'd like do stuff for that in like the morning. And then we would come in, or I would come in, because I pretty much lived there for however long. Like, the band members would fly in and out. Yeah. But uh, I would just, like, listen to you and watch you do stuff. And I learned so much from that moment. Because it wasn't just, like, diving into my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. watching you do that and tumble down was such a different different thing. It was such a different sound. You know, it has that that old-timey, like, Johnny Cash, like, social distortion, but with, like your twist to it yeah and i was i just fell in love it's like the songwriting was amazing i just fell in love with it and so it like that moment with recording and you taught me how to sing which is like i'm so sorry that you had to go through all that because (laughs) it's a process it's a process it, it was a very long uh duration for you very great moment for me but uh that like i was listening to uh your self titled mx today Mm-hmm. And I hear the tumble down, like structure, the storytelling, like the kind of the twang a little bit in that one more than I ever have in like the other MXPX. And I was, I was, I missed listening to tumble down. I haven't listened to tumble down in a little bit, mm-hmm. and I miss you doing that. I, like, what happened with that? That's interesting. Oh, tumble down. We're we're still together technically, but we just kind of went. We kind of like split up. Um, didn't play any more shows after 2013 Mm -hmm. and MXPX started, it it was one of these things where we just transitioned from tumble down and MXPX started getting really busy. It was our, started with our 21st, 21 year anniversary. So we, we turned 21. We did a show in Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington. And that sort of was after that tumble down, didn't play any more shows, um, it wasn't only because MXPX was was getting busy. It was also just because it, it sort of hit. We had hit some pretty pretty intense situations on tour and yeah. some scary situations. And so it was kind of like I think the guys were ready to take a break. Now the break just yeah. ended up being a really long a break. A very long break. Yeah. But every now and again, I'll I'll, I'll write an idea. That I'm like that can't be anything but tumble down, and so I've got like a few, oh, that's few awesome. new ideas, you know, rolling around my head for tumble down. But I mean, it's gonna be a while. But eventually, right. I'd like to get the guys back and uh, and do another record. Yeah, those guys are great. Uh, we played a couple of shows with with those guys, <clears throat> and uh, what was the bass player's name? The stand up bass, Marshall. Marshall, man, he is hilarious. He is just like, <laughs> or, he is a, or drunk, one crazy. of the two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was probably drunk with him. I mean, I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it we all, great. we, we all, Tumble Down was, was definitely like my Navy, not, not in the same way as like a Navy, you know, a Navy sailor get, getting off a port. I, I was, right. I was married, but, but in the way of like partying, like, we partied yeah. pretty hard in that band. All the songs were about drinking and, and yeah. smoking weed and, and getting in trouble. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure one of your security guards carried me up to your room after a tumble down show. Do you in, remember that? Uh, in, in New York, New York. We, <laughs> really. we, we, we played um, Beauty Bar and mm-hmm. me and Dave did acoustic. I remember. And you guys played, and then we went out to New York, New York, mm-hmm. and you had like this Russian dude that was watching over you. I think he was Russian. I remember that. I remember a thick accent. And, yeah. Uh, and I fell asleep in between the slot machines, and they're like, "You gotta go," and you're like, "Oh, just bring this." And the you know, dude like carried me up to the room, and I woke up, and you guys were still up like downstairs. <laughs> I was like, where am I? And why is it so clean? Like nobody's been in the room. That yeah. is hilarious. Who could that have been? I know a couple, it could have been Mario. Um, he's not Russian, but he has an accent and he's giant and he's bald. Yeah. Yeah. Is that that's him? It. Yeah. What, he was our bus accent? driver. He was our bus driver. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> ah, what's his last name? Um, it's not ringing. I'd have to look it up. I, a lot of times I'll put like Mario, bus driver, Europe or something. You know? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but uh good yeah, guy really nice great guy me. great guy love love mario he he 
we worked with him years and years ago and he still comes out now and again like he's moved to different cities in the u.s he's from europe he's from mm -hmm. austria i think and austria i but, was way off but he lived over there not that honestly Austria's not that far from russia i mean but, but accent wise i feel it's pretty drastic yeah but think about like Schwar <laughs> arnold schwarzenegger i mean like totally. i'm here to pump yeah, you yeah. up and put you upstairs yeah, yeah. Go to sleep. It's not a yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that could be Russian. I mean, you know. All right, sure. Yeah. Now we had, I mean, you know what's funny is like, that's something I think of you and I would think Vegas, I think Sprockets, I think some of the shows, but those little details of, oh, you're this European, Russian guy, you know, yeah. carried me up to the hotel room or whatever. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, yeah. That's something I would never be able to pull out of my head in a thousand years. And I'm still, honestly, <clears throat> it's very vague. Like, it's vague in my mind. I don't have those details. Mm -hmm. You know, like Vegas, a little blurry. You know, by that yeah. time, after the show, because Tumble Down shows, we'd be known to drink. We'd be drinking going onto the, the stage. But during yeah. the set, people would bring us shots. It was kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah, so yeah. four shots. I remember that. You know, I'd hand them out to the band guys and we'd be drinking shots. And then people would sometimes bring me just a shot, just me. Mm -hmm. And if I was feeling good that night, I'd, you know, cheers to those people and, and have mm -hmm. extra shots, tequila, whiskey, sometimes vodka, but usually tequila and whiskey. And I got a pretty good tolerance, but no yeah, doubt I, I so. some of those, some of those evenings were blurry, very, yeah. very blurry, but. We survived. We survived. We survived. To, it, to tell another story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we are. I should write Tell a story. Was about the best, man. That, that was just good. It was just good energy. Oh, man. I we, know, I know so people much that swear that, that talk about Tumble Down as their favorite band of all time. Like, people love it. So it's cool that you are. Uh, it, it's not done. Done. It's not done, done. It'll be and different. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. That's what time does. Yeah. You you always are really good at like aging and moving and growing in the right direction. Like your, your last MXPX album is it's definitely. I know it's based on opinion, but it's definitely like your top. Like you, that's an amazing album. It's so good. I was listening to it. And I was like, dude, I can't believe that he's still writing like this after Thank you, like dude. twenty something Thank years. Because I remember when I was when I went to Monkey Trench, I knew of MXPX because my drummer, my old drummer, was obsessed with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I knew the I knew Chick, uh, you know, a Chick Magnet and Punk Rock Show, and I knew the staples, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I knew of you, and I knew that you were like, you know, mixed in with all the big hitters uh, at the time, and and you were just like everywhere. You were like a very well-respected person in the in the music industry and so i hadn't listened to mxpx maybe like in a year or so S secret made or self uh secret, secret weapon, weapon yeah out. secret weapon came out and i was like holy shit like he's he's doing bigger better things than what everyone always kind of talks about like the you know what i mean you grown like you grow thank those, you like it's it's pretty crazy and you just keep on getting better and better Thank you. And, you know, and I feel like you should fall apart at some point. You know, like at some point, you're a, you're a rock star for like, you know, however many years. Yeah. You should be like, I'm tired. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a good song, but it's not going to be like this heavy hitter. Like your new song is so fast. Like as soon as it opens up, you know, the feedback and do, 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 do. Like the whole deal is so good. It does not sound like, it sounds like a bunch of kids like ready. Let's go start the mosh pit. It has that that youthful like energy, and you've been able to keep that, which is so amazing. Thanks. Are you talking like about you, "Can't Keep Waiting"? Yeah, like the single we kind of released like a year ago. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know it's what crazy. I what I attribute it to is well, aside from the songwriting, the songwriting is uh, hopefully gets better, but uh, right. is the singing. You know, as and you can attest to this. The more you sing, the better you get, the more comfortable you get. Right, right, right. And so singing these, you know, the self-titled album that you're talking about, we worked on that like a year in practice and we could play it front to back. And we did. We did for the for the record release 
thing. We did a live stream on Facebook before it was 2018, July 2018, I think. So it was kind of before we do what we do now, which is, you know, legit live streaming with a, yeah. a real camera and real audio. But we kind of just did it and we just wanted to be able to play it front to back. I don't know if we'll, we can, you know, I don't know if we'll be able to play our next record front to back or not, yeah. but I mean, maybe we'll see. But uh, back to the vocal part, being able to practice those songs that much and be able to sing them is yeah. why I think the vocal performance is that good on the, on the, the album and, and just growing, just growing and getting better. But you just been you've been able to keep this like genuine love for music, and it shows in your in your albums. You know, like I feel like a lot of like uh, people that are in the scene. You know, like four or five albums in, they're you know successful. They that's what they do for a living, and you can kind of see it kind of tail off a little bit. Like I gotta do this album. I got to do this song mm -hmm. and they kind of start tailing off and you've never done that once. Like you just keep on getting better and you can tell like, this is what you love to do. This is and the youthfulness that like my love for music is so strong comes out every time. It's beautiful, man. I, I learn so much from you all the time. Like what, just how you talk and like how you write songs and then the albums you put out. It's beautiful, man. You, I can't believe that I ever got to uh, spend time with you to learn that kind of stuff because Good. i Thank you know you. Pan pandemic happened and i didn't know what was going to happen and i just said i'm going to buy a studio and i just brought it to the house and my wife was like what what's going on you know like all yeah. these things started coming to the house the world shut down and uh it's like well i remember mike used to always say <laughs> why is everything so hard <laughs> and <Yeah>. then he <laughs> would dive into something and that was like a lot of like what I built the studio on it was like what you and Greg, because Greg would like walk me through. He's like, you're not very good at singing this. So we're going to do this over and over again. <laughs> Greg. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and then Love he'd it. be like, hey, we're, uh, we're, you know, this song would be good if you did this or did that or whatever. And it just was like a huge moment because every time I go to a studio, they, they record you and that's it. You know, like they might make it good. They might do some back end stuff or whatever, but it's like, hey, this is your show. You you do what you gotta do, and it's never been that experience like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we recorded with Jesse Lawson, and, and Lawson's great. You know, he's uh, he has a lot of like great like talent and where music should go, but it wasn't that same experience, and it was such a beautiful thing. And it's it's uh, like looking back, that was what twelve years ago, ten probably. Yeah, at least I don't know. It was a uh, while ago. About yeah, ten, twelve, yeah, ten, and ten to twelve. It just it just seems like your love for music has just gotten bigger and better. I hope it comes across. I mean, it gets hard, and, and, and you know, we when we put together like things to sell online, and you know, collectors' items, and you know, when we put out the box set, we tried so hard, and and I feel like we did a pretty good job proofreading everything and trying to get everything, and there's still like mistakes in there it's something we missed you know yeah. it's just like it, it makes you feel like do i really care enough you know because if <laughs> i did I, I you know i sent this to all the band members and we all of all of us said oh, okay this looks good and then there's a screw up on it and i'm just like i'm dumb but yeah it just seems okay <laughs> but we're catching stuff too so i'm not saying it's it's not that we're not also catching some mistakes. Yeah. So we're like fixing, fixing. And then you're like, okay, I think I got all the mistakes and no, you missed one. And so mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing that I think is always going to happen in life, no matter what you work on. Uh, even computers make mistakes. Computers screw yeah. up. They shut down. The hard drives die. Like it's not just because you're human. I mean, it's the way of the, the earth, the world, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. the planet we live on. So I guess what I'm saying is I get hard on myself, but also I talk through it and go, okay, everything's going to be all right. And then that's what allows me to dive back into these, these projects. Well, you're also, you're able to grow when you reflect on that. If you just didn't care and you made a mistake and you just moved on like, oh, all right, you wouldn't reflect on that and then you wouldn't see where you need to grow. And then when you try to grow, like, let's say it's like a typo. Okay, I'm going to proofread this more. Just that, like, change of, like, mentality. 
Mm -hmm. can create a whole nother growth area that you weren't even ready to even explore yet, you know, like, so you keep on growing as long as you care about what you do, you'll grow, you know, like it's impossible not to. And you actually care. Like you still care. Like it's a, like you are, you should be the guy that like everyone should like look up to as a role model, you know, like, (laughs) like you are the perfect role model. You're, you're, Uh... you're nice. You, uh, you write great music. You have a great style. I'm and terrible. You, st- you still you still love what you do. The imperfections are great though. You know what's separ- f- what's funny about imp- imperfections is I was just looking at a video of us uh, MXPX on 120 minutes with Matt Pinfield. We were on a few different times, but one of the times I was watching and I've got real short hair and I was just I did a pretty good job explaining what we were talking about. We we're talking about slowly going the way of the buffalo and how the the name came about. And this kid wrote us a letter saying we were selling out. And I was like, and I was explaining that, you know, we were only, we had only released two albums on an indie label. We weren't doing crazy things yet. And so I didn't, we didn't understand why is this guy saying we're selling out, but we just were <laughs> laughing about it. And the thing I noticed the most is just how mumbly I was, how like, mm-hmm. And I was probably trying hard not to be mumbly. And that just goes to show that like when you're young, even my features looked kind of mushy, you know, like I wasn't developed in the way that I see myself. And so like, do you ever look back on like videos of yourself when you're young and go, wow, I look kind of weird, you know? (laughs) I do it. I'm doing it right now. I just looked right over at myself and I was like, whoa, no, I don't have that problem. (laughs) I reflect now in the moment. Uh, no, totally. I do. Um, I do. I do remember those moments growing in that moment. So, like when we played, like that time frame when we played the Waste of Space. I remember mm-hmm. I was like really fit. I cared about <laughs> like working out. You know, I cared about like. But you my also hair drank more. a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there do. was a lot of, but there's a lot of steps. Like we weren't considering how many steps we were taking. That's right. That's a lot. That's a lot of workout. You know. So the calories are balanced, but uh, I I look I remember that moment and being like oh I'm I'm fit uh, I look great in this photo and then I see that photo like now and I go oof you look beat up <laughs> you are <laughs> you, right. you are questionably uh, able to live at this point like you might be dying in this photo and you don't even know it like there's been those moments where I remember seeing that photo for the first time and now reflecting and just being like i bet everybody times. can relate to that like haircut um you know oh, hairstyles yeah. like not that they're all bad like some of my hairstyles are like that was cool but if i had it now i don't know if i'd feel the same way like it's like but like for an easy one would be like bleaching my hair completely blonde yeah white blonde it's kind of fun, but it also like gives you a different look. Like, and if I'm an, oh, old, yeah. an older presents you different, uh, I, an older young man with uh, with bleached blonde hair and all these tattoos, that might be kind of cool. But it, that's not how I see myself right now. If I need yeah, to re, maybe I you know re like I think like secret weapon. I had a mohawk, and it kind of worked. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. does a mohawk still work for for a guy like me now? Probably, but Dude, if you if you got the salt and pepper up there, I would rock that shit. Oh, I do. I do have the salt and oh, pepper. Oh yeah, Dude. <laughs> Dude, the mohawk. That is. I've got like the superhero gray hair. Where it's it's not gray on top. It's all black, and then and I've got my full head of hair, and then on the sides, my sideburns are are ashy or that's you know, gray. I can't wait for that. So. Since uh, when we pandemic wise, <laughs> we were recording, I can't, man, I cannot. So I, I dyed my hair gray just because I can't, I love, I can't wait to have that gray. So as this washes out, I'm okay. hoping they'll get that salt and pepper. Like, let's see what this looks like. Let's see if we can rock this. It looks cool when you're young, you have a young face and like kind of salt and pepper hair. Like we had uh, Smitty was our, our monitor guy for a, a few years he uh, he also worked for still works for Pearl Jam. I think he's like their tour manager now. But anyway, he was a Rat Sound guy, which is the sound company that we would we would rent the PA and the production from each tour. Anyway, he had he was young and had full 
silver hair and he mm-hmm. looked so good like yeah it was like that's kind of cool i like that yeah. like i really well, like that it, it has that it's like it's like false advertisement it's like whoa he aged so good but he hasn't who, aged yet who he was, just had the hair <clears throat> who was that uh he was on american uh american <laughs> idol sorry i'm like what is that show american idol and he got like I don't know if he won the top, but he he was pretty far up there, and he had full gray hair, but he was like in his twenties. You don't remember oh, that? I don't okay, know. that was probably a random random memory that I had back when people all all would watch American Idol. Was that yeah. ever was that ever a thing? <laughs> that was totally a thing. People did that. <laughs> people they, used to watch did. one show, like all the same show. Yeah, and now they do it in every every country. I think. Like, it's a big deal still. Yeah, there's American Idol Switzerland, which has, mm-hmm. like, the same amount of Switzerland people. Switzerland people. Utah. Doing Switzerland right. thing. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but when I was – so in during the pandemic, uh, I never colored my hair ever. Like, I did it once in high school, and then uh, my, my mom came home from, like, she was gone for a month or something. She saw it. She shaved it, and then I had to go – to take like yearbook pictures or something the next day. And it was like this, it was like hor- horrific to me. Like I was like embarrassed cause I don't know. It was like a whole deal. So I didn't dye my hair or anything um, for a long time. And so I always liked it. Like when I see people dyeing their hair and doing like the cool stuff, you know? Um, but during the pandemic, I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. So I just started playing with the colors and my wife's like, you know, she graduated the salon stuff, beauty stuff. So she's like, oh, if we mix this color, we do this. And so, like, for every video, I have a different color hair. And so now I'm just doing it because I don't want to go back to brown. Yeah. So yesterday it was yellow, and I didn't know what was going to happen. Today we're doing we're doing gray. Looks good. I think I think it's like a green gray. Silver but, fox. But, you know, like, that's what, that's what you got to do. You should just you should do the mohawk, man. Just play with it. Yeah, what's, I got, what's gonna happen? I had a faux you're gonna, hawk. You're gonna cut your hair a few months ago. I really like the short hair; it just makes you feel good. But I was also thinking, <laughs> like, maybe I should grow my hair out, like yeah. long, while I have it. Yeah, I love that. I love the, I'm like, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> the short hair. But uh, speaking of, I mean, I, I want to talk about the new record. Uh, but before we do, you were talking about childhood a little bit about you know dyeing your hair, but do you remember do you have an earliest childhood a childhood memory that that seems notable to you like, oh, you, i got many okay what's the, i got many dude well, uh okay you know what i i thought of one but i was like it's kind of kind of weird so now i'm gonna go <laughs> <laughs> so now i'm gonna go with this one uh when i was like i don't know six or seven I went to wet and wild in vegas because i was born in vegas and i moved to idaho and then i moved back okay uh and I drowned in the wave pool. They had to they had to bring me back to life. Whoa! And that and that's the reason I am the way I am. So <laughs> you, how long were you under? The, oh, no idea. No idea. Uh, I didn't hear about it until like <laughs> we don't talk about that. I, we don't. It's like Bruno. So <laughs> I went. <laughs> I went. Few people re- got that. I'm sure. I remember I looked at my dad. He was on the on the beach, and then the wave came up. And then it swept me underneath, and then I was underneath, and that was it. And then I was, like, on the – so I don't know if I got, like, knocked out or what happened, but I, like, swept, and then I woke up on, like, the side mm. with someone bringing me back to life. And uh, it really uh, – it was really weird because it, it created this, like, I'm never going to die Oh, persona. so it didn't scare you. It, it emboldened no. you. I was like, I can survive that? I could do anything. And so it really messed up my 20s. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that it was a contributing factor to just this self-entitled, I can do, I can do that. Were you... And now I'm scared on everything. Like when, the, when we go on, like we were driving back from Cali yesterday, we went on like a little hill, you know, like your stomach goes up and yeah. I was like, we're going to die. And like it was that immediate, <laughs> I've now flipped. You flipped the script. <laughs> Yeah, the kids, the but you kids were you, abrupt. you were the kid. Have you seen the movie Almost Famous? Yeah. So the part where Billy Kudrup's uh, character is on the roof. I am a golden yeah. god. 
I'm you know? on drugs. Like that, that's <laughs> to me, that's your personality. That's, that's how I see you. And I could see that yeah. goes right along with, with having a crazy twenties. Yeah. I Have mean, you ever been on but, any rooftops? No, I no don't do drugs. I don't do drugs. Well, you don't well, have to do drugs now, but no, no, I, I've not, I've never really been in the, the drug scene. Okay. All right. And it's, 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 it's because, uh, you know, I've had family members, uh, go, pass away because of it. So I've always been like deathly afraid of actually like drugs. So what, what are you doing? Are you just doing like motor, motorbike jumps? What, what are you doing? That's crazy then in your twenties, what were you doing? I just just like, drinking, uh, just keeping it to the drink- alcohol. Which Drink, is a pretty it, dangerous know. drug, by the way. Yeah. It is, okay. You want to go that? that drug? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like, like I like weed. When I smoke weed, it's insane. What happens? What, what to happens? Me mentally is insane. The last time I smoked weed, it was during the pandemic. My wife's friend comes over. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'll smoke weed. And then, and I, why? Why did I say that? I don't know. Legal now in Vegas, happen. right? Legal, legal in yeah. Vegas. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, so I smoked, and then I walked around my house and thought, "Oh my god, I have, I have kids." <laughs> and then like looked at them, and I was like, "Holy shit!" And then I was like looking at them, and I was like, "Their name, their names, their names are," and I was like, "You know, trying to." And then I was like, "Holy shit! Why would I call them that?" And then I was like, "Then I, then I was like, what if I called them by a different name? Then they would think I have." kids somewhere else and it was like this whole thing and then i was like can't call my wife by his different name then she'll think i'm cheating and then i was like just freaking out like paranoid panicking and it's unnecessary like why does that happen to me i don't know so i can't do that kind of stuff like i need something that like brings me down like alcohol i haven't drank alcohol in like a year and a half but but when i did it Congrats. it was like the thing that brought me down yeah you know like slowed me down because my brain just races I don't know if you remember the studio, but my brain, like, we were, like, doing a take, and then I'm thinking about something else, and, like, it was just, I, it's just, like, OCD, or, or was it? No, OCD is, like, fixated. A- ADHD? ADHD. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just everywhere. Yeah. Like, you, it hasn't been so lately where I've been able to, con- like, kind of tone it down. You weren't on Ritalin as a kid? No. No drugs? Should I have been? No, I'm, I don't think so. Probably should have been. I think <laughs> even, even when kids have those issues... Unless it's like a serious chemical imbalance that needs to be treated somehow, I, I feel like you can ride it out by yeah, stimulant or, or, or anti stimula outside. You know, just not taking drugs. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I don't know really anything about it except for what I've heard. But <laughs> yeah, we, we're, <laughs> let's diagnose we some people. About let's di- I'll diagnose <laughs> you. No problem. Yeah, buddy. yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk. About, let's talk about jinxed before you get back to the the July Fourth barbecue. Okay. Uh, um, what do you want to know? I like, mean, it sounds good. Sounds good. Like, it like, it? yeah. I mean, I checked it out versus you know your other records, and if you know, it feels like a continuation. Your style, it's punk, got some yeah. metal, metal vibes in there. I really like s- some of the production you've added. Um, it's fun. Just gives you a okay. little ear candies, and and you know some of the intros are really cool on this record. So yeah, just I mean. What's what's your plan for it? Are you guys gonna? You, of course, these days you don't have to be go, going and doing live shows, but you still play live now and again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a few shows in the works for this summer. Um, Sprockets. We're yeah. gonna be playing with, uh, I think, uh, Living in Fiction, uh, which I don't know if you know, like Stetson. He uh, does a lot of recording stuff. I think he is tied in with Feldman somehow. I don't know. Uh, some, what, not, yeah, I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to look However, him up. however, uh, cool but he, name. he's a really good. Uh, they're a really good band. Um, they're coming in September, and then I think we're doing some stuff in July and in August. But uh, all pretty small shows, you know. Like, like I think we're more focused on recording i'm really into recording right now like bought the studio mm-hmm. we did it ourselves right we had yeah. uh morgan wright was kind of our engineer slash producer and he would come over to my house um and we would just kind of figure things out and the cool did you thing, drums uh, at your house well we did drums at dave's house but oh, everything dave's. else at my house okay cool so what i end up doing for drums like so moving forward we learned 
it's a hassle, right? Like you do the drums. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and, and we don't have the cool setup that you do. Um, it's still so a hassle with the cool it. setup, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. It is always a thing. So I just barely uh, bought like a electronic drum set just what is that? for – Oh, that's probably a fire alarm. It's we're fine. It's okay. okay. We're gonna live. <laughs> I hope it so. It probably is. <laughs> There's barbecue, you know, like yeah. things are happening. Um so like I bought a drum kit, so now we're running the drums as we go. Okay. I'm sure it's gonna stop soon. Right? But that's gonna go. be a huge help, right? Because <laughs> when you we it's just so, the drums so are so hard. In the past you've written all the songs before the drums and then added them. And it's a pain. This, this album, yeah. yeah. Then we had to go back and kind of change dynamics a little bit, and then redo this, redo that, and it became like a a nightmare. But it was it was completely a learning curve. I didn't even know we started this project as we're gonna do an acoustic album because I think I can figure out the acoustic level, and then it was like one song to the next, and it's like this we gotta speed this this up, like I <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can't we can't release it, this. You're just like this. This is this isn't where my heart is. My heart wants to go faster and wants faster. to be louder. Yeah, like I. So that's why I was saying earlier is like I admire that you're not slowing down. It's not like the, the band's falling apart or anything. Like you are the, the original members, the solid. You're fast. You're, you're keeping up with where your heart wants to be, and it's beautiful because that's a huge thing. I listen to it now, and I'm like. Am I slower or faster than I was before? Is that like really matter? Is energy there? Like I analyze it that way mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. You know, like trying to keep that youthful I love for music. Like trying to keep that. Uh, so this album was cool because when everybody would leave, I could do the bells and whistles. I could throw the little, you know, backup vocals. I could spend hours on one line and nobody's getting mad at me. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I could figure out shit, and so that was a huge thing. And so uh, we just signed with uh, music supervisors, and so like immediately at the gate, they were like, "Can you do another album?" And I'm so excited. So I'd rather do I'd rather do a million albums, and then play shows here and there when they come up instead of like planning a tour. Like I feel like I like gas that pricing. Yeah. You know, like just record. I want to, I, when I die, I want like, I want a two pocket. I want like eight albums to come after, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Just, so right now I'm actually working on two albums, like just back to back. I'm just going to keep, just keep going, plugging away because awesome. it, like what you were saying is like, when you look back and you're like, oh, I hear this mess up. Did I care enough to fix it then? Or was it an honest mistake? Like you kind of have those thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just know so much of what I'm going to change already. Like just in the, in the pre-production, you know, like the beginning before everything starts falling off the wheels, you know? And so we did a music video for every song on the album, which was another learning curve. That's a lot. Like, That's a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. So we released <laughs> it every, so we released a single every month last year. How, how and, important are music videos these days? Is it more you know of what? just because we always have done it? I mean, uh, for me, the TikTok avenue has opened up a lot of doors, and so just you know, getting content out every day has created uh, a, a new fan, you know, set of fans that we would have never, uh, you know, came across before. Um, the NFT stuff all came from TikTok, right? And like. So having this the video footage of like the behind the scenes stuff and having, you know, how we write the songs and then doing the music video because then you see the whole product. Yeah. And you can kind of and for me, you write you write good songs. I write songs that are like like I had an idea and then then I'm over here with this idea and then somewhere in the song I'll kind of tie them together. But like if you're not paying attention, I've lost you as a listener sometimes. Like that's <laughs> kind of my writing like you know like your style. like I, I i really do like a quentin tarantino like here's this piece here's this piece and you have to wait to the end to get to it yeah, so yeah the videos are really important for me because then you kind of see what i'm trying to talk about okay yeah that makes but sense I, yeah but i also kind of keep it to that abstract like i want people to feel how they feel about it whatever they took from that line is that's important to me. So I try to keep that. So I try to kind of keep the videos a little 
ambiguous, but um, so, it's, so it's really important for me, I guess. Yeah. So for TikTok, are you taking like, I don't know how long TikToks are, but you take a piece of a video or you put the whole video on TikTok? What do you? Both. Both. You, you split it up and then you can yeah. even make it based on what you say in the lyric. You can do a TikTok theme on right. that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, TikTok is like a, it's an algorithm play, right? So you're trying to figure out the algorithm that best best suits you and whatever you're doing, yeah. right? So, um, I mean, we haven't done anything crazy, but the NFT stuff, uh, we found Drippy on there. And what he does is absolutely insane. I don't know if you've checked out the NFTs yet. Drippy, but no. Drippy really. doesn't. Um, I'll send you a link, but... He's a so he's an old tattoo artist, and he when the pandemic happened, he just went on TikTok and he just started doing like NFTs and stuff, and so he we kind of started talking and then um, we had common interests with like the mental health, you know, the suicide awareness, um, you know, that's important to us. So we decided to do like an NFT that raises money for that, and. If I wasn't doing the stuff on TikTok, having the music videos, and like, I, I don't have time to like do a new video every day and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm eating veggies and you know whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not. You're clever, not doing that. Not, I, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's annoying I, to see like musicians do, doing that kind of stuff because it's not. It. But but at the same time, I get it. You know, it's like they're just trying yeah. to get people to like watch their video. But it's just like, oh, it's a weird play. But I get totally music video stuff. I mean, putting putting like something you would already produce on TikTok makes all the sense in the world. And and you can you can mix it in with stuff. You know, like you can get creative with it. You can do. There's so many different. Um, I do like the TikTok and the music video side of it because it's like a whole new creative outlet. Hmm. Honestly, if I wasn't doing the videos during the pandemic, I might have went crazy. Yeah. They occupied so much of my time every month to Good. do it and then to, to get it going by a certain time. Because once we were done recording, it was like, well, now what? What are we going to do? We're still in pandemic mode. And yeah. so um, it was fun. I mean, we did it from an iPhone. We drove out to weird locations that no one was at, you know, and, you know, the more graffiti, the better almost. And it was just like filming, and then um, you get so much content. We just do it like that, yeah. you know. Like I don't know, it, Dude, it's worked out for us. Where can we see the videos? Are they out? Uh, yeah, they're all on Facebook. They're uh, we really don't promote our YouTube. Is it on YouTube shit, too? So, yes, YouTube.com. My sprockets. Everything else is the sprockets. Okay. YouTube. But yeah, they're all there. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's crazy because watching the videos, because I did all the editing as well. Oh, So wow. I had to learn how to do that. Talented. And okay. And oh, super talented. Watch them. Mm -hmm. You're going to think that. You're going to be like, super talented, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. No, a um, lot of it is just doing it, you know, like doing something yeah, rather totally. than nothing. But yeah. I believe in that. You just got to dive into shit. You know, like. Yeah, absolutely. You can't, you can't let the fear of failure stop you from doing something that you love to do especially it's when crazy. you're gonna, you're gonna fail anyway so why be afraid it's like it's totally. gonna happen so just go and do it that's easier to say than to do but yeah but if you don't try the worst has happened like you're, you're already at the worst wasn't that a song i think i heard that today probably somewhere it's like and i was like dude good point if you don't <laughs> try but this is the worst that's gonna happen why not try yeah, yeah um but yeah so like i did the videos um, we released them all. Then we kind of gauged like what sounds good on the album. I've never done it before. I've always just, these are the songs we're going to record. These are the songs we're going to put on the album. And that's it. And this time we left off four songs. You know, they're just as singles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I it's, think it's, it's smart it's, to do that. Yeah, I'm, I know. But I, I haven't really thought about that stuff. I just like, I want to record. Yeah. I want to put it out. I want to get going. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the problem is in the past, I always let people managers or or producer or whoever whoever's like trying to finance us or be part of our thing uh, i always let them take the show I'm like you do this and i'll just do the music and it's it doesn't work out because it's like they don't understand that where where the heart 
is in, like you know you don't understand you don't you don't get it. Yeah, they don't so have the history. Hard to, it's hard to branch out from that moment, to that point. You know, mm. like they can look on the inside and say maybe you should do this, but they don't have that creative idea. And so, like us sitting down and actually doing that, I, I mean, the new songs are great because now we have music video in mind. It's like reversed. So now we're like, oh, we could do this video where it's like this and this and this, and then we have like, oh, so we'll add this tone to it, and we'll, mm. and it's creating a. It's it's cool, man. That's cool it's, to almost think about the video as you're making the song. As you're making a song. Huh. So, like, the new album that we're working on has 13. Uh, we'll see how they all, like, play out once it's recorded. But we're, we're focusing on 13 for the first album that we're recording. And it is crazy. It's crazy to, look like, listen to. Because it's, like, because it, now it's not even, like, well, can we do this? It's just we can figure out a way. Cause that's what I was doing. So everything during the recording, I was just leaning into my failures. Well, that sucked. So, and then like mess around and then like something works. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, then I just lean into that. Yeah. And, and it worked out. How, uh, when are you writing all these songs? Like I used to do for the pandemic, I used to do a daily morning, write. Just a couple hours so in the morning. Yeah. Wake up and just, fiddle and, and record so i'd record the first layer so like the bones of the song mm -hmm. um just record it real quick kind of get it and then sometimes like the night of i'd be thinking about it and i'm like oh you should do okay and like add this to it and then i start diving into that one a lot more um but as far as like i don't i don't think i ever sit down and just think i'm gonna write this song based on this concept or this idea i just kind of <clears throat> i can write the same song with the same four chords and have completely different feelings and moods because i just hit that note and if that note strikes me in this mm. whatever way and then that line comes out and like it just kind of naturally forms and then the song becomes what it is and that's probably why the the songs are all over the place sometimes like it's like this line and this line's way over here and then mm -hmm. i bring it together over here because i'm just it's just a natural it's just like it's like almost like an like a meditation process yeah it just flows like water yeah and it like just it goes just, where it goes and then sometimes when it doesn't <clears throat> like maybe i like the guitar rift or something um I'll, so I'll stick it around and then uh i'll kind of just record it as is but then like listening to it maybe like a few months later a whole new thing just pops up so it's cool. Yeah, We've never yeah. done it like that. We never reflected. We never recorded as we wrote. So now I rec record everything as I'm writing it. Mm -hmm. So then I can look back and be like, like cause sometimes I've noticed that I'll re I'll do a like guitar part that maybe is harder for me to sing like without practicing, right? Mm -hmm. And then I then I so I start recording it. So I dumb down the guitar part, and then I listen to like the first take, and I'm like, oh, that guitar piece. Is way better than this, but I forgot about it. You yes, know, I completely yes. forgot about it because now I'm in the in the song. Like I've I've already started writing the song, and so it's been it's been cool. And like I really like it, and I'm, I really hope that I can do what you've done, where you just set up everything in the house as a recording. Yeah, because like I want to go back in the bathroom and record a song. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. I was so hell bent. Yes. I'm recording one of our love songs in the bathroom. Yes, yes. And I it was that. amazing. <laughs> the bathroom's got, well, it sounds like a bathroom, yep. <laughs> it sounds like a bathroom. <laughs> and I think um, I think Greg yelled at me that day because I, I had to bring the acoustic guitar in so I could keep the beat for some reason. I could only play and sing that song. And he could hear it. So if you, like, cut down the track, you can hear every once in a while, not consistently, you can hear the acoustic part coming in and then stopping and coming in and stopping. But you really have to like mess with the, you know, EQ and everything to pull that out. Yeah. But I yeah. remember Greg just being so mad at me. He's like, why would you do that? Why, why would, would you, you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't even know if it was going to pick up. I, you know, <laughs> everything's picked. It's, it's a microphone. It's in the I room. Know, I know. Yeah, I, I can hear Greg right now. <laughs> Oh, he's so mad at me. Greg is so mad at me all the time. 
<laughs> oh, good times, man. I love Greg too. Greg's great. I just saw him like literally a couple days ago. It was awesome. Awesome yeah. to see him. Yeah. All right, dude. Uh, Awesome to catch up with you. Thanks for doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's good times. Uh, Jinxed is out everywhere now. Go check out the um, the videos on your Facebook. It's the Sprockets yeah. on Facebooks. Yeah. No, I just said Facebooks. You, you I apologize it. for that. You I'm sorry. No, you said the Sprockets. <laughs> like, you said it with an the, accent. Like, you said sprockets. it like Dieter. Like how Dieter says it. <laughs> sprockets is a German thing, no? <laughs> the Sprockets? Yeah, I don't know where yeah. Sprockets came from, but it, yes, there's a lot of, a lot of Mike Myers in our references because of it. Yeah, order nine. Yeah, like a little school girl. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. All right, cool. Um, where can people find you online? Like, do you have a website or is it ma- mainly yes. Facebook and? So this is the easiest thing to do. Okay, good. You want to go to www.sprocketsband. That's Sprockets with an S band.com and then it links to everything is there you can go to our merch you could go to our nfts you can go to our tiktok our instagram our, we i think our myspace is even on there our youtube it, it's all myspace all Facebook. Just, yeah i don't think i don't think we have access to it anymore probably not but but it links to it hey yeah. maybe someday it'll come back i don't know no i way. try to log in and it won't let me damn yeah they're smart. They're Somebody smart will buy companies. it again, and then they'll relaunch it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Any, yeah. Any billionaires out there listening? Buy MySpace. <laughs> buy MySpace. It was awesome. Who's it even owned by? Isn't it owned by some really rich dude right Probably. Now? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> All right. I don't even know. Elon. Right. Elon needs to go after. Elon. MySpace. Yeah. I think he's still going to possibly get Twitter. It's not The deal's not dead yet. So we'll see. Yeah. All good. All right. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you as you. well. Thank you. Be safe. You too. All right, man. Later. Bye. Oh, it's peace. Peace. Peace out.